Hey folks, it's Andrew. Welcome back. So it's been a while and I want to tell you where I've been. For the past couple of months, I've been working on a new LinkedIn learning course that I'm so excited to share with you. What this course is going to be is it's geared for beginners and it's going to help you understand IAM concepts and implement them into Okta. There are labs, there are hands-on, you will get hands-on experience to me showing you step-by-step -step with an Okta how to do the various different IAM concepts such as establishing MFA, how to import users to give you a good foundation in Okta. It should be dropping real soon, I believe probably next couple of weeks. So look out for that one. Until then, I want to talk about Sailpoint again. In my last video, I showed you how to deploy Sailpoint. And if you missed that video, I'll link it for you up here. And what I want to do now is take it a bit further. I want to show you how to aggregate data or user information into Sailpoint. And I'm going to explain to you some of the various different areas within Sailpoint. For example, what is an identity cube? What is aggregation? Where you would go to to set up a connector? Just to give you a good foundation of Sailpoint. Because Sailpoint can be hard because they don't really give you the nice ways such as Okta, for example, where Sailpoint, they do have a free foundation course, if I remember correctly, within their university. But anything more in depth, you're gonna pay a lot of money for. So I wanna give you just a little flavor or a sliver of what Sailpoint IIQ is, which again, is their on-prem version, their more bread and butter versus their cloud version. And again, explain the different concepts. So stay tuned and let's talk more about Sailpoint and how I got to where I got. Okay, so on my screen here, you'll see that I have Sailpoint up and running. And let's go ahead and log in and then let's talk about everything within Sailpoint. In reality, SP admin is the default password or default user. As you grow into Sailpoint, you won't use that anymore. And most companies today, they really disable SP admin or they don't really disable it. They change the password and they make it more harder to use because you really don't want SP admin because that's your global admin if you're somebody who knows Entra. So just keep that in mind. So here on my screen here, you'll see Sailpoint and you'll see that there are a couple of things and risk scores. The first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to Sailpoint is you need to create connectors. And what that means is you want to create a source to pull in data to bring in your users, okay? Because if not, what's the point of Sailpoint? And that's what I did. So what I've done is I actually created a different instance that have my own database my own data and I use that as my, what I call HR feed. So what you'll see here on the screen is if you go to applications and application definition, this is where you create your connectors. Again, the common use case for companies when it comes to using stuff on IQ is you want to aggregate from your HR data or your source. This could be your Workday, UltiPro, whatever your organization wants to use when it comes to your HR data, this is where this starts is you want to take cell point and you want to aggregate or bring in data from your HR source into cell point because you want to have your users and what we call the identity cube, which I'll show later in this video and what that all means. So on screen here, you'll see I have two connectors and I'll do a later video on Azure AD and how I got that set up. But what I really want to talk about is this HR feed right here. So the HR feed is what I created a different instance to pull that in. And you'll see here is very simple. You have your HR feed, you have the owner, and then the application type. So it's a JDBC connector for the most part, and I kept it very simple. And also what I did was I made this the authoritative application. And what that means from that perspective is this is the top source or the primary source that you want to do, okay? And once you created the name you can be very descriptive, I would, because you want to make sure your end users, engineers, developers really know what this connector is really from. From there, what I did was I did a configuration and this is where you need your other database. So in my database, what I did for, it's a MySQL database, you'll see here the URL, the root, the password, the driver, 
And then I kept it very simple. I did a SQL statement to select star from DP export, which means bring everything in, okay? And that's really what I did was I used that. You might have, or your developers might use a store procedure to do this. And that's okay too. I've seen it, I've seen it used in all different ways. Now, once that's done, what you wanna do is you wanna do your schema. Now, think of your schema as really what are the attributes I want to bring in? What am I looking at when I connect to the database? And a lot of times what you can do is you can go ahead and do your attributes here and you do a preview and it'll show you what is available for you to look at. And you can pick and choose what you wanna bring over or if you don't wanna bring over, which is fine and that is okay. So let's talk a little more about these little fields here in your schema. So I'm gonna check my notes real quick to make sure I have this all properly corrected. So your identity attribute right here, this ID sys users, you wanna think of it as what is your unique field or unique identifier you wanna use, okay? You wanna really set that up to say, hey, what is unique? A lot of times it can be a GUID, employee ID. For our instance, it's the ID sys users and these are underscores. The display name is what refers to the schema where what is the display name for the attribute? And you can use something like first name, last name, email, or in my instance, display name, and that's what I use there. And that's nice to do because you want to make sure when you pull everything in from a display attribute perspective, you see what you, we'll see it makes it easier for a end user or even your analyst to understand. Once you set up this information in your attributes, you can always do the preview schema and see what's going on. But before that, let me take a step back. What you wanna do also is, before you can see all this, you wanna go back to your settings here. And once you're done with all this, I forgot to share is you wanna test your connection. Now, I don't have this running at the moment, so it's gonna fail. But when you want to set this up, you wanna make sure it works, you run your database, you run the instance that you're going, and then you test your connection, and it should be test successful, then you know you're good to go. And once it's successful, what you wanna do is go back to your schema and you hit your preview schema here and it will show you all the values or the individuals you wanna bring in and all the values from C here. And again, it's gonna fail because I don't have it running right now. <laughs> and to be very honest with you, I forgot the password to log into that. So. So what happens when you start this earlier, we're setting everything up and you leave to do your like learning course and you forget things and I didn't write the password down. Hey, it happens. But that's really what this is and that's the data from here. Now, some other things that I wanna talk about here is you can do correlations if you want to, that's up to you. But also what I wanna share with you is rules. So when you think of rules, rules is it's a way for you to be specific and it's, written in bean shell, and make sure I check my notes here, is there are so many rules you can create, right? There are provisioning rules where when you provision data to let's say AD, for example, you have rules to let's say, check to make sure the email is available, or you wanna make sure that you change the email to be first name dot last name at company.com or whatever. And for our sake, we have a creation rule right here where if I open up here, you'll see the rules. You'll see, again, this is written in Java Bean Show, and I had a friend help me out with this one because, again, I'm not a coder, but I understand how to read this and I understand how it works. But so essentially from us is we are basically saying, hey, you're good, replace it with this. Oops, and then here's, you want your first name to be a string, first name, last name, at whatever, again, the email. I am telling the down provision, this is what I wanna do, and here's my first name, last name, at dev, or whatever. So all of these, again, is the rules that I want to do to provision. And it fires per account. So if you're a brand new person to sell point, and if you'll say you're a analyst, this is something that you don't, really, don't need to know. A lot of times this is more for your engineers or your new developers from that perspective. But to be very fair with you, as consultants or as analysts, it's good to understand some of these rules because you want to have knowledge or understand what things are, are going or where things come from. And that's what helped me in my career. So just a little tidbit that I think you should do is to remember that if you want to learn more, you know, my motto is you never stay curious because you never know. 
This is how I got to my cell phone experience, which is digging in, learning, asking questions, and stuff like rules here. That's really what this does, is you just understand where things are going because when you have errors, you can help your developers or your engineers saying, hey, this is really what happened because you understand it versus saying, here's your error, go figure it out, which can be annoying for time to time. So keep that in mind. So this is a simple rule that I did for a creation, and then you're pretty much done. All these different areas, I really don't want really to focus too much on it. I want to keep it very simple, it comes to a video, but you can do such and such as password policies, if it's a risk from there, if you want to do it, a risk score, which to be very fair, I've never implemented a risk score ever in all my career of doing IIQ deployments. It's always been talked about, but it's always low on the totem pole. So I've never really seen this in true action. I've seen the values of other companies, but I haven't really seen it being used as often as I think it should be or how cell point intends to use it, if that makes sense. Okay, so the connector is created and you're done from a conversational perspective of a handshake. You're saying, hey, cell point, I want you to go and create these identity cubes and pull from a source. That's your connector. And that's what we did right here was, was create this HR feed. The next thing you want to do is now we want to go and create an aggregation task. And where you go for that cell point is set up and task. And you'll see here that I have two types of aggregations. I have a Entre ID, which again, I'll make a video to talk about that one. But we have a JDBC feed right here. And if you want to know how to create a task, it's very easy. Just go to the upper right hand corner right here and drop down and you have so many options on types of tasks because cell point is more than just aggregation. Remember, cell point is a identity governance administration tool or IGA for short. So there's so many different options that you can use cell point for. For example, you can have a data export, you can do any alerts for some things, group aggregation, you wanna add counts, activity. But for our sake, what I did was I did account aggregation and that comes up to this right here. You give it a name, Description, whatever you want to do, and then you can go whatever you want to do for runs, sign off, concurrency, it's up to you, and statistics. And you'll notice here is it's going to ask you, well, what application do I want to scan? And that's where you choose the application because if you don't have one, it's not going to work. And you'll get errors or it just, it just nothing will happen, which doesn't make sense. So you want to make sure that you choose the aggregation, excuse me, and we choose the HR feed. And these, all these different little checks and balances, these are very unique. I'm not gonna go through it one by one because we'll be here forever. And I wanna keep this very simple, okay? You can definitely learn what these are as you grow into your career, but I wanna just talk to you about the gist of where things go in terms of aggregations and where to start. So once you are done with your aggregation, you can, you can, do, you, you can run it, which I can scroll down here. You'll see save, save, execute, cancel, or refresh. So I've already run this and to, to ready to see your results, just go to task results. And you'll see right here, because I set this up earlier, this is the a successful aggregation. And you'll see here that it shows what application I scanned, how many accounts did I scan, and then how many were created based off of that creation rule that I did earlier in, in the connector, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Now you have time, time, well you have errors like this. And this is not, this is an Entre ID error, but you can have it. And for those who are wanting to be uh, analysts in, in, in IQ, or even engineers or developers, errors are part of the game. And you're gonna get something like this and you gotta figure out what this means. So just keep that in mind. And trust me, they can be very annoying because I'm from time to time, it's not very intuitive. And that happens, so just keep that in mind and it's just annoying. but. I am done. So we did a connector. We did an aggregation to pull in accounts. Now what's left? Now what you want to do is out of these 99 people I just created, where do I go to to see their accounts? And this is where I go to what cell point calls an identity cube. So identity cube is your identities, identity warehouse. And now here are my users. So in my database, in my HR feed, I have pulled in all this information, all these users. And this is what cell point is supposed to do, is you'll see that I pull in all these users and it goes by username and you'll notice that there's no first name, last name, manager, assign roles, detective roles. And I'll tell you why. But these are all the individuals or people that I am managing. And you can see here, I have username 
and then I have I have all this information not typed in. And again, I'll show you why I didn't do that because I want to keep this simple. So this is an identity cube, and this and all these are attributes of the of the individuals. You can add more attributes if you want to. I'm just displaying these for simplicity's sake. But there are common instances where you have a lot more attributes to define more information about the user, and that's common. Entitlements. If you're a person who have watched my earlier videos, you know what entitlements are. They're permissions. And you'll notice here in cell point, you have roles and entitlements. I'll make a video in the future that talks more about roles and how cell point break, breaks out roles and entitlements. But remember, a role is a bundle of entitlements. So obviously this being very fresh and brand new, I don't have any roles created. I have no entitlements because I don't have anything provisioning or pushing down to a external application like AD, for example. And I can do that in the next video to show you guys how that would, how that would look like. Here's something that I want to also be to kind of show you too in the identity cube. You'll notice application accounts. And what this is, is this shows you all the applications that the, that you're using for the information of the user and what they're tied to. So for example, this is the HR feed. If I have provision down to AD or let's say Salesforce, these are connectors you build in. Okay, within CellPoint. And what it'll do is the application accounts will show you the value of the individual. So let's say we had an AD account here. It will show you Abel Morales' account in AD, maybe what is their SAM account name, what is their, what is their UPN, anything that AD has in terms of the attribute of a user, it will show that to you. And it can show you stuff like groups if you choose to. And that's nice and convenient too because when you provision access or you have somebody who requests roles or entitlements, you want to make sure it works. On the flip side, if you have something called a native detection change or somebody goes into AD and makes a change, Cellpoint can pick it up and you can see that discrepancy and have that connection and be like, hey, why is my AD not in correlation with my identity queue within Cellpoint? And you can do that and that's what that does or how that works, okay? So this is an identity queue. And this is basically the makeup of the user. And then you'll see here again, I don't have any roles and entitlements, but that's okay. And that's pretty much what I want to talk about in this video is give you a gist of cell point, identities, and how you do aggregations. And the last thing I want to talk about is again, under attributes, why I didn't do this is because I didn't set up any of the identity mappings here. And we'll talk about that in another video. You'll see here in the, in the identity, as we hear, I didn't really fully vet this or really map this correctly. And what you want to do if you if you choose to, and you should, is you want to map all your identities the proper way or your attributes, excuse me, to your identity queue properly. Because you want to make sure that those are populated. So for example, here on the first name, you can put first name here as a name and you give the given sources of where they're going to and the targets if you want to, the source where it comes from. And I can talk about that in another video, but the whole point of this video is again, I want to show you cell point. I want to show you how aggregation works. I want to talk about core, not core, excuse me. I want to talk about connectors and how that works from there and then how cell point functions. So that was a lot. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, I'll talk about the same thing, but actually I'm talking about how I did it within Azure. And what I'll do is I'll bring up my Entra or Azure AD instance and talk about that connection and how that works. So, Stay tuned. I'll talk to you hopefully real soon. And as always, stay curious because you never know. I'll see you soon.